Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chulu Longcorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing this tutorial series all about creating and playing with Yahaha online. Today, we'll be going over editing and manipulating objects in the Yahaha editor. The editing tools in Yahaha Studio are used to manipulate objects and create the interactive structures and elements of your spaces, allowing you to both make visually appealing details and challenging obstacles for players. So let's dig in. To start, let's look at the object manipulation controls. We touched on these in the Studio walkthrough video, which will be linked below, but here we'll go over them more in depth. First, let's talk about the grab tool. The grab tool can be used to select and drag objects around your scene. Notice that as you drag objects, they will automatically snap to the bounding box of the closest object, allowing you to place them relatively close in proximity to other objects or the ground. Notice also that the grab tool is automatically used when you drag an asset from the resource box and into the scene and behaves exactly the same as it does for objects already in the scene. All right, let's move this object down here and move on. Here's a pro tip. Using the F key allows you to focus on a selected object. And then using Alt right click allows you to rotate the camera around that object. Next, let's look at the move tool. The move tool gives you an arrow gizmo, which allows you to move the object around the scene. You can move the object in a single direction by clicking and dragging on one of the gizmo arrows. Or you can move the object in two directions simultaneously by clicking and dragging on one of the gizmo squares. Now we'll explore the rotate tool. This tool gives you a gizmo consisting of circles. Simply click and drag on one of the circles to rotate the object along that axis. Or click anywhere between the circles to rotate the object along all three axes. Alternatively, you can click on the larger circle to rotate the object relative to the camera's view. The next tool is the scale tool. It will give you a gizmo similar to the arrow gizmo, but with boxes instead of arrows. These work much like the move tool, but scale the object along its axes instead of moving it. Also like the move tool, you can scale along two axes if you select and drag with the triangles. Clicking and dragging in the middle of the gizmo also scales in all three dimensions for uniform scaling of an object. The final object manipulation tool is the transform tool. The transform tool combines aspects of each of the other tools into one tool so that you can do many operations on one object without having to switch tools as much. It contains all the rotate and move tool capabilities and the uniform scale capability of the scale tool. Here's another pro tip. Switching between the transform tool and the scale tool using their shortcuts can vastly speed up your workflow. Another capability of the editor, which we covered in the studio walkthrough, is a scene gizmo, which can be very useful when you're laying out a scene. I suggest you check it out in the studio walkthrough link below. In the studio walkthrough, we went over the object editing capabilities of the editor but I wanted to revisit them here and show you how they work while editing a scene. So let's start at the top and work our way down the menu. First in the menu, we have undo, which will allow us to undo the last action we took. So if we say moved an object, we could undo the action and it will return to its previous location. And boom. Now the object's back where it was. Next, we have redo which allows us to redo the last action we undid with undo. So we can redo the move we just undid. Both of these actions are very helpful while you're going about editing your scenes. After redo comes copy and paste. Copy allows us to copy an object in its position and orientation. Paste then allows us to place a new object in the scene exactly where the copied object is. We can then move the copied and pasted object and have a duplicate of it wherever we want it. Next, we have duplicate. Duplicate is very useful, being a copy and paste combined. It copies an object just the same as the copy command, but
but also places it in the scene just like the paste command. Then, just like the copied and pasted object, the duplicated object can be moved wherever we need it in our scene, and we have two of the object. The next command, array duplicate, is also very useful. This command allows for copying objects in rows. After you activate the command, simply drag on one of the cones which appears around the object, and the object will move along, leaving copies of itself behind. As I mentioned in the studio walkthrough, it is helpful when doing walls and floors, or any other type of structure where you want rows of objects adjacent to each other. Following array duplicate, we have delete, which simply removes the currently selected object. And finally, we have Select None, which deselects all objects. That covers editing objects in Yahaha Studio. Now let's speed things up so we can take a look at these tools in use while I build the beach pier. In Yahaha Studio, you can maneuver and manipulate objects to get them where you want them. Here I duplicated this plant so I can use it in the area where I'm going to place the pier. I then dragged the pier into the scene and worked it into place. I use a bit of undo redo here to get it where I want it. I'm also using the transform tool to get things laid out where I would like them. Next, I drag some grasses into the scene for a bit of visual interest. I want more than one, so use the array duplicate and duplicate to quickly add more. As you can see, I utilize the explorer to help me refine my grass layout. This way, I can more precisely select what I want to edit. It helps considerably when you've got many objects in the same area. Now, after some final tweaking, I add a boat to lend a little more visual interest to the space. And once that's in, I'm done. As you can see, utilizing these tools and operations, we can build just about anything we would like to in a Yahaha space. That's all for this tutorial, but there are more elements to cover, which we'll continue to do in future videos. So, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials.